So we're down here, we're in South Texas, where, you know, where this is like a geriatric, it's like a little house, you know, it's got, got an RV park over there, and you got the houses here, and this is, you know, this is, the, this is a phenomenon you get down here in South Texas, the winter Texans, okay? Generally, more of a Caucasian Anglo vibe moves down into the region for the winter when it's frigid temperatures up north, then they leave right around now, around May, to retreat to the more pleasant temperatures up north. Because in South Texas, it's the same, you know, in a winter in South, uh, summer in South Texas, the same as a winter in Minneapolis. You can't go outside, it's just miserable out. Plus the whole region is basically made for driving. There's no, you know, streets with no sidewalks, you can't walk anywhere. So you're just trapped inside. Same thing as being in Minneapolis or Chicago during those frigid January days. So anyway, when we come down to this uh, neighborhood, because a lot of these winter Texans have some exquisite horticultural tastes. And so that's what we're doing here, okay? We're driving around, you know, looking suspicious. Looks like we're maybe casing a joint or something. But uh, we're actually just coming out here looking at some of the cacti that these these uh, people have in their yards. You know, they are, they, they are the Anglos, but, you know, they're generally more tolerant than pleasant Anglo than you might get in other regions of the United States. You know, they're, they're uh, you know, more tolerant, you know, more pleasant to be around. A lot of them are nature people. They're into birding and, and that kind of stuff. You know, they're not going to call the cops on you. Well, I don't know, I can speak for yourself. Maybe on my case it's a little different, but you know, but look at that. We'll come here, we get all these fruits, and you know, there's no one to even complain about us because there's no one around. So it's like, you got kind of like a nuclear winter feel uh, right now in this area, but that is a that is a feral cactus, glaucescent fruit loaded with seed, okay? You know, we're just, we're just driving around. You know, we're just driving around, listening to Sade. We got the Sade on a, on a stereo, and we're just having a nice time. And now the neighborhood does look somewhat revolting, I'm not going to lie. It does, I mean, this, I see this, and it makes me want to die, but at least it's not grass. They're doing a xeriscape. I mean, let's go see what else we got. See, this is, they got the nice stone. Look at this man. Look, they got this man. Is that a man, or is that the, this, you know, I think I've seen this species in situ, on a Pueblo Oaxaca border, but you know, it's got a lot of trichomes, but I don't see none of them uh, I don't see no fruits, but it's a beautiful specimen nonetheless, you know, this is No one no local would have taste this exquisite. All right This is definitely an out-of-towner that would come plant something like this and appreciate it down here The locals all want lawns and stuff except for you know a couple uh, You know except for a microcosm of people, you know locals generally want the lawn, you know It's a diseased mindset. This is this is a definitely out-of-towner Look at it. Look, it's so desolate. The killdeer are moving in. You see, she's pissed that we're hanging out here. She wants us to follow her. She's gonna do. She's gonna pretend she's hurt, and then she's gonna lead us away. So it's so it's so desolate right right now. You know, the, the killdeer are nesting here. It's a beautiful cactus. Look, you can't even see her. Look how look at look at that. She's being. Like, don't talk to me like that. I got every right to be here. All right. This is public. The street's public property. Look, look at it. Yeah, she's standing on top of her eggs. Look at it. See that. She's nesting in the front yard because ain't nobody home. Oh yeah, see, yep, she's trying to lead us away. Look how, look how amazing those are camouflage. Yeah, look, see, this is what she's doing. She's pretending she's hurt, and then her mate is over there. He's pretending he's hurt too. That's what they do. That's real smart. You're a good ma, you know. You're a good ma. My my ma was like that. She was a public school teacher in Park Ridge. Hey, come here, come here. I'm not. No, no. I just want to get a photo of you. We're not gonna mess with your babies. Cause she's a smooth operator. Look, I like the golf thing. That's nice. I want one of them. A little figurine, but I want it to be like a wino taking a shit against the brick walls. Look at this. This is nice. Look, they got golden barrels. This is a uh, kind of cactus grusonii. These are actually endangered in situ in a while, but they got these. Look at this. These nice big. It looks like a like a pillow, like one of them uh, throw pillows. You know, something like a yoga ball. It's the size of a freaking yoga ball. And it's getting hit. Who's in there? <gasps> Look, the stigma's open, too. You know, you guys know cactus morph uh, flower morphology? I mean, all flower morphology. If you don't, I don't want you even watching this channel. All right? How long have I been yelling at you to memorize this stuff? You're not doing it. I'm really, I'm really getting mad. I'm sick of this stuff. You know, you, there's a lot of cool stuff. Understand the reproductive biology of some of these plants. Look at it. These are good fruits, too. Actually, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're not. But look at that. Look at the amount of trichomes in there, all right? Very similar to a cactus platyacanthus that you get in Nuevo Leon, but it can, you know it, that species can get upwards of eight, eight feet tall, if not more. Wonderful though. This is a great grusonia, a golden barrel they call it. I got a couple seedlings that he's growing in a little, uh, in a little uh, thing. I think we're getting rolled up on right now. Okay, we got a golf cart coming. It's an angry guy, and here we go. 
Never mind, false alarm. Anyway, look at that. You got are those offsets or those ceilings that pop? They look, definitely look like offsets. Why is no? Why are none locals doing this? This is nice. Whole neighborhood's dead. Give me a break, you fucking degenerate. Come on. Oh my God, that's that's a look at that. That's amazing. I almost had a heart attack. All right, it's not just the Cardone, the pack of serious Pringle. It's the figurines too. All right, everything but the flamingo and the garden gnome. They got everything, you know? Those deer are really, look at that, look at this beast. Only a high class individual would have a Cardone in their yard. Not a saguaro, a Cardone. Uh, you talk to some people in the US, they think any columnar cactus that branches is a saguaro, all right? You know, that's because a lot of people don't know. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of variation among columnar cacti, especially in Mexico, all right? And of course, in South America as well. Yeah, we gotta let him out. He's, you know, he's, you know, I don't even think he knows where he is right now. You know, his dog dementia, bless his heart. Anyway, look at this beast. How old do you think this is? And look at the beautiful blue color on that farina. Now, it does appear to be being attacked by some sort of pathogen, a fungus perhaps, or maybe an insect, but it endures nonetheless. Now, I just wonder, could you plant this in a thorn scrub garden, you know, that didn't have the rocky stuff, you know? Because it is a little humid down here in South Texas, and if you had mulch and some other brush, around it, you know, where there's our native weedy Helianthus annuus, would it endure? I think perhaps it would. But the good thing to know is what is the age on this, this beast, this exquisite gentleman. Look at that. Oh, gallons upon gallons of water in those photosynthetic stems. In good day to you, sir. Now, while it may not be a cactus, I feel I do need to give a shout out to Platycladus orientalis. This is a highly versatile conifer in uh, the juniper family Cupressaceae, the redwood family Cupressaceae. It's got fruits that look kind of like, a, you know, they, they look like a little horn, kind of. But this thing will grow in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and at the, on the South Texas-Mexico border at about 26 degrees latitude, which is what we're at down here. It is a versatile tree, a beast of a tree. Often see them planted in, uh, in you know, your grandparents' front yard. Or, uh, or in cemeteries. Look at this monstrous bass. This is Tridax procumbens. This is, I fucking hate this plant, all right? It's supposedly, it's native, but it's all around the world. One of the most invasive composites ever. Anyway, look at this. We got this monstrous bastard. This is a, I think this is Sirius Peruvianus uh, monstrous. So it's a mutant. It's a mutant phenotype that's just been perpetually cloned. But I think this mutation does pop up somewhat regularly. So this is a mutant, a mutation, and then it's just everything after that is generally propagated off as a cutting off the same original mutation. There's probably a few different, um, you know, phenotypes in cultivation that do this because this, like I said, this is a relatively common mutation, I think. This kind of fasciated thing. It's really getting hit, though. Something that's scarring, I think, is from mites or something. You know, they flare up in the winter and they get knocked back. I don't know. Now we're moving on to another section of the park to see what else they got growing here. A lot of good stuff I heard. Okay, my guy Hector gave me the deets on this. So we're rolling through here. Don't really have permission, but that's okay. Because we're just, we could, we're prospective buyers or something. They don't know. Some nice people here too, as I'm going to soon find out. This is nice. This is nice. Again, not only for the propensity and, and the, the high ratio of uh, lawn ornaments, and hummingbird feeders, but because this is Pseudobombax ellipticum. I'm pretty sure this is Pseudobombax ellipticum. It definitely is a sarcocolescent plant, so it's got a storage mechanism in the trunk, and uh, with these leaves, this definitely, uh, yeah, this is Pseudobombax. So Malvasi, this is basically a relative of uh, Baobabs. This is a, a quote-unquote new world relative of Baobabs. You can see they're having a pruner because it's getting a little loose. It's getting too out of control. Oh my God, this sweet man who lives here just came out. He's offering to give me a seedling. Okay, so this is not bat pollinated. I was wrong because I, I just found this flower on the ground. All right, if this was bat pollinated, these would be white, but these are essentially all stamens. I saw another Pseudobombax in Brazil, but this is pink hummingbird pollinated probably. And there is the, uh, so you can see the buds up there. See that? Look, you still got the style. So this is where this fell off of. This, the Corolla fell off there and the style is still on there. And there's enough nectar that the bees are, and flies are still going for it even though uh, the flowers die. So this, all right, gentleman tells me this actually was rooted as a, as a clone. Just a branch, just sir? A branch, yeah. Just a she, branch. She had it in a uh, 
Like so, roots. word to the wise, pseudobombax can be propagated just by branch cuttings rather easily because it does have, it's a succulent stem. Oh, this, I've seen this in South Africa. This is edible. That's, that's a, that's a nice one. Portulacaria, is that Portulacaria? I think it is. Look, here's a shaving brush tree in full bloom. I believe it's just the cutting off that other one. Yeah, if you see them and they're white, because some species in this genus are white, they're bat pollinated. The one I've seen in Brazil was white. This is very obviously bird pollinated. Look at these long stamens producing prodigious amounts of nectar in that cup. There's a, there's the uh, a calyx basically with uh, the ovary in there, and this is the style through which the pollen tube uh, you know germinated once the well, well the pollen tube germinated on the end of that stigma, and then sent the pollen tube down into that ovary. So you get a fruit. I believe this might be self-fertile, I don't know, basically, you know, same family, I think it's, uh, what is it, Bombacoides, same family as, uh, as the Baobab, which you get down, you know, over there in Africa, Madagascar and stuff, and here, look, here's a bud about to go off, looks like just a little, uh, you know, quasi-erotic little rat, look at this though, beautiful, and you got the photosynthetic stem, all right, good indication, it's from a dry uh, you know, seasonally dry environment, and uh, the leaves are somewhat tomentose as well. Look at that, with that beautiful, oh, oh, look, you can see the hairs on there. You can see the hairs on there. They're calling the cops, they're calling the cops any minute, and I'm going to be removed from the property, because this is technically a gated community. We just snuck in here. All right, you know, kid had to take a nap, so we're driving around, let the car run, and she's napping in the back, and we're just out here filming some stuff. Anyway, look at all those stamens, and then there's that white style. And that's where, you know, hopefully you get pollen germinating at the end of that style from another plant. Look at all those anthers under those little brown anthers. Bunch of pollen. This is nice. And, I, they, you know, that, the, that uh, geriatric couple, that kind geriatric couple gave me a cutting off these. Because you could take, you could cut off a branch and they'll root. I didn't know that until today. But that's where this one came from. They told me that. Wonderful. This is nice. You know, people are really nice here. They also gave me a Jesus pamphlet too in case I ever decide to convert you know, no shade. I don't care. That's fine. You could talk to me about it, whatever, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, there we go. Pseudobombax ellipticum. I wish more people planted stuff like this. Tons and tons of nectar. Tons of nectar. So actually, this might have dried up, but there is tons of nectar in those. It's evidenced right there. See, here's a flower I took off. You could see all that nectar. Definitely hummer pollinated. Hummingbird and bird pollinated. See, I just took the... Uh, just took the Corolla off. That's that's fantastic, man. Evolution. You know, you can be religious too and believe in evolution. You can find a way to make it jive. People find a way to make all kinds of shit jive, you know, jive together. It's fine. Never understood the religious people who are anti-evolution. Look at all that nectar. Wonder what it tastes like. I'm going to try some. Wow. I said wow. Look at it. That's an organ pipe. Look at how big they get here. That's a thick stem on each one. Multiple ribs and you got a little bit of those betalane pigments in the new growth see that red all right but multiple ribs not just three or four ribs you probably got 20 ribs on this whole stem this thing probably weighs i don't know maybe to, maybe a little bit less than a dodge you know depending on what model year we're talking about stenosirius thurberi all right someone with a lot of class put this in there. i don't know who did that if it was you know when they developed this mobile uh, home park slash well you got mobile homes and you have these model homes but I'm wondering if you get the you know if you didn't have the stone scape in here if this would if this would rot you know what I mean I don't know because we are you know it's a little bit different here it's not like Sonoran Desert where these are native this is the you know, you know Tamalipan thorn scrub we're east of the Chihuahua Desert as you move east on the North American continent you get more rain all right so this is like a you know this is very hot here but it is a little humid but you could see Steno Sirius Thurbri is saying, you know what? I'm gonna do this anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna grow anyway like this. You got flowers up there or not? But again, you need multiple individuals to get good genetics, good outcrossing, all right? Instead of just cloning the same phenotype, you know, the same individual. Look at that. That's a beautiful plant right there. Who would not appreciate this and, and try to take it down? Shame on them. Thank God nobody's done it. Thank God these people aren't here half the year. You know, otherwise, you know how old people get, you know, they start thinking about stuff overthinking it they don't got much to do and i'm only saying this from experience they don't got much to do they start you know they don't travel if they don't travel they're at home they start overthinking stuff suddenly they're cutting down trees you know buying a, a skid steer moving stuff around whatever so they might take this down you know maybe they say i don't know that cactus is too big maybe i should take it down who knows you know i don't know unless they're smoking a lot of pot maybe then they relax a little bit i don't know but a lot of people i've seen 
the, you know, more conservative, older, they just start overthinking stuff. They get issues, maybe, you know. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's keep, let's keep moving on. This is beautiful. This is the yard. They just need a cardone. They got a Kleisto cactus, which is a hummingbird pollinated genus of cacti from South America. They got the pink flamingos. They got the roosters. They got the cute little turtles with the Mardi Gras beads on it. And they got an Echinoceros. And they also have a Sunita. Okay? Lophoceris shadii. This is the spot. This is nice. I'm really feeling this hard. This is good. They got the golf cart too. So, oh no, that's the, is that the neighbor? No, that's the, they got a pool noodle in the golf. Anyway, Lophoceris shadii, everybody. You can see. You got the trichomes, again, protecting that apical meristem. This is from Baja, California, and Sonora, okay? One of the most hot, heat-tolerant, all right, of, uh, of the cacti, from what I know, next to prickly pears, all right? We're not talking prickly pears, though. That's Opuntioides subfamily. This is Cactoides subfamily. In terms of Cactoides subfamily, this is one of the most heat-tolerant plants you'll find. Only occurs in Oregon Pipe National Monument in, uh, in Arizona in the United States. In the United States, at least. It's much more common in Mexico. Look at that. But see that? Only four four or five angled ribs. See that? See? Only five ribs right there. Not like that uh, organ pipe, which had upwards of 20 to 25 ribs. Beautiful. I don't know what that green ball is about, but I'm feeling that hard, too. That's nice. Now, this is not an uncommon plant to encounter, but to, you know, it's just a serious species. But to, look at the kiskity. Look at the kiskity. Well, you're pissed off, too. Oh, this is because this is their nest. That's their nest. See, the geriatrics leave town for the summer, the birds move in. That's nice. Nice that you can, you know, timeshare like that. So this is serious, but again, it's that monstrose, but it's a different monstrose form. It's got a different mutation. I'll get out of here in a minute, man. Well, hold on, goddammit. So, uh, so, but you can see it's about the flower. See, it's got a massive flower, but it's very common. But it, it produces a, a edible but mediocre fruit. That's nice. Look at this. We got Bocarnia gracilis over here. These bastards can get massive. Massive caudiciform, again, with the sarcocalescent thing. Wish I was seeing more lawn ornaments here. I don't see enough. Maybe some dwarfs. You could do like a, an obscene dwarf thing. You know, I'd even, you got to have St. Francis some, some, you got to just, just a, just a whole smorgasbord of religious iconography and then some like dwarfs, you know, uh, wino dwarfs, you know, lounging past out. That's what I would do. Anyway, Bocarni Grace, I've seen this in habitat growing in Tehuacan Valley. Down there in Puebla, just north of the Oaxaca State, Puebla State border. And these can get massive. This probably got knocked back by the freeze. You know, I'm willing to bet that's what happened, actually. Asparagaceae, the family, okay? And the, uh, I believe it's a nolinoidae, the nolina subfamily. But don't quote me on it. I'll put it in the captions. Over there, we got our, our native Hesperello, which you see in a lot of shopping centers. But you can see with those pink tubular flowers, it is poll pollinated by hummingbirds. And they are very easy to grow from seed. Anyway, you know, you know Sade was actually, because a lot of people think Sade, you know, is from the States, but she's actually Nigerian born. I think she lives in the UK now. Born on January 16th, 1959. Wonderful artist. So this 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 video is dedicated to Sade. Look at his sago palms. Not a palm at all. A cycad. All right. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.